Egypt was one of our closest allies, but it's also one of the countries where people dislike us most. There's a reason for that. That's not a coincidence. And we were, we were funding the Mubarak regime, a very autocratic regime, to the tune of billions of dollars over 30 years. You know, Egyptians were aware of that. And they tied the U.S. They said the U.S. is partly to blame. The U.S. is backing the dictator who's repressing us. But also, they saw U.S. aid, again, whether, whether or not we agree is a different story, but they saw U.S. aid as a bribe to Egypt to not confront Israel. Dealing with democracies is very different than dealing with dictatorships. And this is a new reality of the Arab Spring. And I'm not sure if the U.S. policymaking structure has really realized that in a fundamental way. And democracies have to be responsive to their own people. They have to be responsive to popular sentiment and popular anger. So if the vast majority of Egyptians are furious at U.S. policy, that's not something that President Morsi can ignore. And Egyptians are looking at him to distance Egypt from the U.S. because their criticism of Mubarak was that he was too close to the U.S., that he was America's poodle, if you will. So, uh, and this is going to be the reality throughout the Arab world with these emerging democracies. They're going to establish their independence from the U.S. That doesn't mean that they're going to go to the other side, to Iran's side, no. But it does mean that we can't always expect that they're going to do exactly what we want them to do, especially on very controversial issues like Israel. President Morsi, um, who obviously comes from the Muslim Brotherhood, is doing a very delicate dance because he has to reassure international audiences that he's a responsible actor. So he has to say the right things to get investment back into Egypt. He has to say some of the right things on the peace treaty, otherwise he'll infuriate the U.S. And that's dangerous for Egypt. The U.S. is still important. On the other hand, though, he has his domestic audience many of whom are quite re fervently religious, let's say. You have the ultra-conservative Salafis who are a real force in Egypt now. So Morsi has to be keeping an eye on his right flank. And this is what I call the Tea Party effect, where you have far-right Salafis dragging the Muslim Brotherhood further to the right. This is a very difficult dance. So essentially, Morsi is trying to appeal to two completely different audiences who want two completely different things from him. The Middle East is going to continue being vital to American interests. So even if we want to reduce our footprint and focus more on Asia, I don't think that circumstances will allow for that. So I think it, in some ways we have to be realistic. If we do acknowledge that the Middle East matters and will matter for the foreseeable future, we have to put it at the top level of priority.